If the flow in a pipe were always laminar, then the friction coefficient would always be 16 divided by the Reynolds number. However, we observed that above a certain Reynolds number, the friction coefficient increases to a new value, which is independent of Reynolds number. This shows us that the assumption of laminar flow has broken down. If we inject a layer of blue dye into the pipe, then the streak line we see in laminar flow looks like this. As we increase the Reynolds number, we see the streak line occasionally looks something like this, in that we get small bursts of turbulent flow interspersed with moments of laminar flow, and this is known as transitional flow. If we increase the Reynolds number further, then the flow becomes permanently turbulent, and the streak line looks something like that. When a flow is turbulent, it is unsteady, meaning that the velocity and pressure fields change with time. So if I were to measure the velocity field instantaneously and plot it, the velocity would be zero at the walls through the no-slip condition, and then look something like this within the pipe. We can time average these quantities, and of course if we time average over a long enough period, then these have steady values. And for the case of turbulent pipe flow, the average Vx field looks like this. It is worth comparing this with the velocity profile for laminar flow. This velocity profile is parabolic, and we see that the turbulent mean flow has a steeper velocity profile near the walls, and a flatter velocity profile near the center line. Laminar flows and turbulent flows have very different transport properties. By that I mean that in laminar flows, molecular diffusion is the only transport process between layers of fluid, whereas in turbulent flows, whole packets of fluid move between layers of fluid inside turbulent eddies. Now this means that laminar flows are very hard to mix. A classic example is mixing two paints together. If you put a stick into this pot of paint and just stir it, then it will take a very long time to mix the red and white paints together. To mix two viscous paints together, you need to fold and stretch the mixture many, many times. And this increases the contact area between the two plates, allowing molecular diffusion to happen over steep gradients and large surface areas. On the other hand, pouring milk into a cup of tea or coffee shows that turbulent flows mix very quickly. In a turbulent flow, large eddies lead to smaller eddies, which lead to even smaller eddies, and these thoroughly mix the flow together, which greatly enhances the rate of transport of species and also of momentum. Therefore, if we think back to the turbulent pipe flow, there is a much higher rate of momentum transfer from the fluid to the pipe walls, and therefore a higher shear stress and a greater pressure drop along the pipe.